Hey buddy, so the three components that make your program asynchronous. Async, await and task. So I have seen people in my experience that you know, they start using async, await, task blindly without even understanding that they really need to use this in their program or not. So we will try to understand a concept in a way so we don't do the same mistake the other people are doing. Now, you know, before we jump into the code, let's try to understand from the layman language perspective. So let's take a real life example. Now, let's say your wife makes very tasty food. She start cooking the food and then she realized that, you know, some of the stuff is missing in their kitchen. Now, she asked you, hey, can you please go to the market and just bring this stuff? Now, she have two options. Either she can bait till you return or she can start working parallelly and she can cook other stuff until you return. So now two things, if she wait for you and then you know when you come and then she start cooking the food that is something called synchronous programming. But if she don't wait for you because you know she knows that you know I can cook some of the other stuff because you are going to take some time to return. So that is something called asynchronous programming. Now let's jump into the code and try to understand these concepts from c -sharp perspective. Okay, so here we are in the Visual Studio and you know what we have done today. So we have created one class called Affairs Between Async Task and Await just to make your program, you know, this video a little interesting. Okay, now you know what we have this program class this is going to help to, you know, just call those methods that we have inside this class. Okay. Now, so, you know, we are going to understand this whole concept with the help of these two pretty small method. One is long process and second is short process, right? Okay. So now, you know, what we have done in the long process, nothing, just, we are writing a console that long process started, long process completed. And, you know, since this was a long process, what we have done? we have put some delay, you know, this task or delay for four seconds, right? So that will make this process little longer than this process because you know what this process does? It does nothing. If you see, just printed some value started and completed, that's it. That means this is going to take very less time as compared to this, right? Because there is some weight. Now, you know, before we understand this async, await and task, let's try to understand this concept which is synchronous programming. Now this program that we have written, it is a synchronous programming, right? That means this process and this process, when we make a call over here, you see, we are making a first call to long process and second call to short process, right? So that means in synchronous programming, what we are expecting, this process needs to complete it first, start and complete and then this process, right? Now let's try to execute this program and let's see what output we receive. So let's wait. Okay, now here you see long process started, long process completed, then short process started and short process completed. That means, you know, over here between this and this, there was a delay as well, right? So that means these two calls, not this one, go to program class. These two calls are dependent on each other. But you know what? Why short process should be dependent on a long process if it don't need anything from your long process, right? So to solve this problem that, you know, when we make a two call and when those two methods are independent from each other, we go for asynchronous programming. So, you know, the next method in our case, short process that don't need to wait for the other method, the first method to return back, right? So how to solve this problem? So here we go with asynchronous programming. So let me stop this program and we will make it asynchronous programming. Okay. The first thing to make this program asynchronous, what do we have to do? Why we are making this program asynchronous? Because we know, you know, this program is taking very long time. This, you know, this work, then, you know, delay there. Now there's, you know, some pause time, then complete, right? But this is very straightforward. So what I will do, I will make this method asynchronous and now let's see the magic. Okay. So the first thing to make your program asynchronous, we have to use access modifier called async. So what do we have to do is S, Y, and C. So this access modifier we need to put, right? Now, the second thing, 
we already have task or delay you know this will still not work when you just write async and if you try to execute your program you will see your program is still working in a synchronous mode not in the single let me close this and let me rerun one more time and then let's see the output here you go see long process started long process completed short process started short process complete right so that means you know there is no advantage of putting this async keyword right so why why this happen because you know async is very dependent on you know a weight async has a affair with a weight you know async can't live without a weight if you say you know there is no await in the code you just start go and work independently it will simply refuse right this is that kind of ashik you know that lover okay now let's put a await keyword here now you will see that little magic now we have this complete async and await right now if i try to run i should expect some different output okay let's see okay here you go you see uh here you go long process started short process started what was happening before long process started then it was waiting for long process complete and then short process started but this time it short process has not waited you see long process started short process started then short process completed and then long process completed why because you know long process was waiting for 4 second this was a long process here you go right this method has completed his work and then you know long process is completed after right so i hope now we understand when to make your program asynchronous when you know two method needs to call one after other but they are not dependent on each other and you want to make your program faster right this way in your code you can make your whole method your api you know your method the complete method very fast so two methods can work parallelly if they don't have dependency on each other now this was for async and await now you know how about the task right so we are use this one task what how about you know the other task so we can use instead of void we can use here a task here you go right so when you say task you will see uh it says you know that it is a kind of return type right task is also a return type that means you are returning a asynchronous programming right so in next video i will try to make you understand what's the difference between task and void because it is very similar sometime you could use task sometime you could use void it will return the same thing but internally it is technically different you see system threading dot task represent an asynchronous operation right so if you are working with asynchronous programming and you wanted to make it you know return something like asynchronous only asynchronous pure asynchronous go for task right and you will see there is nothing difference in the result if you run this you will see the same result now let me press enter long process started short process started short process completed and then long process completed right now one thing now you know what if you wanted to return something how it will work you can use task but instead simple task use generic task so what we will do over here we will use that generic let's say i want to return int so i will say int right and since i am returning int i have to say here hey return at the end something let's say 10 10 is the integer number right now let's go back and now here over here we have to put for sure a uh, either you can put a wait here directly or you know what let's say i'm saying hey where result right this is my result and i wanted to fetch the result since that was you know asynchronous programming so i have to put some await keyword to activate that right so result is still synchronous so what i will say i will say await and you are done now let's try to understand the result the output it should be similar but there should be something return it is still waiting for 4 second here you go so long process completed and it has returned the result 10 right so when to use async and await when you wanted to go for asynchronous programming when you wanted to make your program faster when you know your methods are not dependent on each other but each of the methods are going to take some time right now when to use task when you don't want to return any kind of string integer or you know something but if you wanted to return something you have to put it this way task generic task right so task and then generic inside over here you have to use int string something now one interesting thing you know 
Now over here, since you are using await, right? What if you, you know, remove the async keyword from here, you will see your program will start complaining, right? See, so await and async can't live with each other. It's like async can still live, right? But it won't work, but await will just die. It will just, you know, make your program dead. It can't live with the async keyword. So now it's asking, hey, please put a sync over here on my program, right? So you have to make sure await you cannot use without the async. Async you can use without the await, but it won't be functional. It would still be synchronous programming. Okay, so that's all for today's video. I will see you in the next video.